Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Slam of Wrestling. Myself, Supreet, and this is your AEW Dynamite Grand Slam for September 22, 2021. Joined by Rizwan here. What you think about this show? I thought this was perfect television. I think this was one of the best Dynamites we have ever seen. And Hands this, down. Is how, this is how you produce a weekly wrestling TV show. brilliant stuff what you think about it hands down like this show combined with the location and the crowd everything about it has had like a big time feel and you know they certainly lived up to that the matches were excellent and the promo there was like one promo which was awesome as it, as it always is and you couldn't ask for anything more than this like this was like perfect two hours of dynamite and we have two hours of rampage coming up at the same venue so what more could you ask for at this point like going into this they built it like a pay per view level of you know uh dynamite slash rampage but it really turned out to be somewhat of a pay per view the way they produced it the pacing it didn't feel like the regular dynamite where uh, we would see a match then two segments then a promo everything was rushing you know but here it it was you know simple everything got time and it was perfect yes it was like it was pretty much a paper if you look at the match card itself and on top of that you had like some promos here and there and like some vignettes hyping up you know the upcoming rampage episode so like throughout you know thumbs up from me we will talk about the entirety of this card before but before that if you are new to slam up wrestling then make sure to like share subscribe do all that fun stuff check out our other content everything you need is in the description below but uh, before we talk about dynamite grand slam shall we talk some news yes we shall uh so the big one is regarding owen hart so it was announced that aw has partnered with the own heart foundation if i'm not wrong yes so it is being done for you know mainly to honor his legacy like we'll be getting video games you know own heart will be featured in, in their upcoming video game we'll be getting merchandise action figures and also a tournament if i'm not wrong yes and also uh a uh, character a video game character in their upcoming console game on ps4 ps5 and xbox so like all around fun stuff and yes the tournament is called the owen hart memorial tournament and the winner whoever wins the tournament it will they'll be given a trophy to carry around with them which is which will be called the owen so that's a thing now can't say anything more than like awesome because you know like we know the history now between owen hart and wwe how you know things ended like it's not fair of me to say the way it is but and you know since then there has been a lot of bad blood and rightfully so from like you know wwe and owen hart's family you know the way it happened and uh, Ma- you know her wife his wife martha she had always resented resented wwe since that day and you know whenever wwe had asked her to you know as they asked her permission to induct owen in the hall of fame and you know use his uh, likenesses for merch video games etc etc and she's always refused and you know this like the stuff that aw is doing currently for owen this is like the best possible way you could honor his legacy and we know that you know how great of a wrestler owen hart was and this is probably the great way to you know like i said um honor him and the, the people you know who are new to wrestling who are like you know pretty casual fans who haven't got who haven't gotten to know more about him you know given what was happening and since like they used to keep watching wwe so this is also the best way for them to know about how great or how great owen hart was so all in all like great stuff from aw to you know do doing what they're doing for owen so you can add this on the list of you know aw doing this great great stuff you know like they brought uh, a guy like cm punk back to wrestling 
and now they are doing this so overall great stuff hands down like this this is beautiful and uh, i'm re- really looking forward to what this tournament will look like yes people have been speculating like you know aw needs their own style of g1 or something like a knockout tournament whatever it is like you know i'll be looking forward to it no matter how they try to present it and i've got i've got an interesting theory about this tournament though you know this the wrestling fan in me never dies trying to speculate on everything that happens so i have a theory i have a theory that uh, this owen tournament will eventually lead to kevin steen jumping ship kevin owens rather jumping ship to aw and uh, winning the whole damn thing because owen hart has been his favorite wrestler since like childhood and his son is named after owen hart and so is his ring name so, so you could you could see to, it happen we need to wait another 6 months 6 months for that Yeah, for a, yeah, six months itself because his contract is up around January, if I'm not wrong. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Let's see if it's Kevin Steen or El Generico. Ole. But anyways. Yeah, anyways. It's probably Kevin Steen, but let's wait for it to when it happens eventually. But uh, we have another big signing for AEW, man. and it's none another than satnam singh yes homegrown like tony khan mentioned this in an interview after signing him and uh, he was like uh, to in, uh, in addition to signing like global stars i'm also wanting to you know cultivate homegrown talent and this person is someone like they they are looking into that direction of you know making him their homegrown star but yeah he was an M- nba like he was more renowned for that like he was one of the first nba players i mean were first indian players to you know uh, play in the nba so i'm sure that isn't working uh, working well for him or didn't he get like a drug test a pro- drug problem or something he tested positive and uh, got like he was a free agent before he signed for aw like free agent in basketball I don't know about that, but overall, uh, this signing kind of makes sense because I mm. think they want someone to represent this market, our market, the Indian market. Yes, and they are just trying to find the footing into it. You know, like currently they have the Eurosport deal, and they've been extensively featuring this guy. Jora uh, Jol or something. Yeah, Jora Jol in the HFO. so they've been extensively featuring him on dark and uh, you know they had these exclusive promos where matt hardy is trying to talk shit to him and then he's like um, okay and like they've been creating a story like matt hardy is matt hardy was interacting with the discovery twitter account uh, sorry d sport d sport twitter account and like uh, explaining what is he saying and something like that so it's they're probably trying something for the indian market but i hope like i i don't expect them to do you know like do the stuff wwe did with jinder but you know i'm kind of intrigued where this goes but anyways man one day satnam and omos will be in the ring and everyone will rejoice that's it. remember this remember this episode but anyways let's start with this uh, review and uh, i have to say man this arthur as stadium it was it looked like in a way that whether i got confused whether i was watching a dynamite or was i watching royal rumble yes uh it was like yeah even royal rumbles are in stadiums nowadays in mania this was yeah it's pretty apt to compare it with royal rumble because you know the maximum the uh, royal rumble show was inside a stadium like it was around 40000 people 30 or 40000 this was 20 and even summerslam would be a good comparison like the recent that the recent one that just happened and yeah i mean the crowd was electric and uh, like you know the open open air and they had this uh, 
what do you call that the screens up top above the ring so it, it really felt like a ppv in that sense as well and of course like you know arthur ashe is a pretty well renowned venue for sports fans like you know fans of tennis especially and now wrestling yeah and the uh, tony uh, tony khan has been pretty uh, vocal about wanting to do a show over there every year so if this also lives up to the quality like we had this year then <laughs> i don't mind this at all yeah. like something like fighter fighter fest fight for the fallen have been an annual thing it, they were supposed they were ppvs at first but now they are like special dynamite episodes you mean grand slam could be one of these special episodes and i'm um, i'm all for it he wants to do one in england he's been wanting to do that in fact they were planning uh, last year's 2020s fighter fest of fight for the fallen in uk until like you know like they were planning for that until covid hit so still up in the air and he oh. wants like the the upcoming the show that he wants to do it in uk he wants to do it in uh, craven cottage which is the home ground for fulham the team that tony khan owns in the premier league the a big stadium Yeah, it is pretty big. Around, I think, thirty to thirty-five thousand people so, would be great. Yeah, and by the way, borders are open now for US and UK. Not borders. The what do you call it? Airports. Yeah, you can fly over there. Uh, yeah, the, WWE is doing a WWE is doing a tour currently in the UK. So yeah, by twenty twenty two, you can expect a AEW show over there. Yes, they've been wanting to do like, um, and UK like, no, slight diverting a little. The UK uh, pay per view, UK exclusive pay per view was something like WWE fans have been clamoring, and WWE wanted to do I think a, a show, a big show in the UK, and uh, AEW is just taking advantage of that high demand because the UK, UK wrestling fans are like very passionate, so this will just you know. be a reward for their uh, loyalty to this but by, by the way tony khan could have easily ran a show in msg but he decided to no let's do it in a big tennis stadium <laughs> fair enough i'd say is like msg has been wwe's home maybe but you know the, it's a, it's an opportunity that he could pursue later down the line But anyway, so uh, I was kind of shocked at the beginning that you know they decided to put Kenny Omega versus Brian Danielson in the opener. But at the end of the match, it kind of made made all the sense. On why it opened the match, and it also got to you know one of the reason was about the finish. Seeing the finish, uh, it made sense for it uh, being an opener, but. about the match was it a classic also the crowd also the i mean <laughs> before i answer that i'm sorry uh also the crowd like you know taking advantage of a hot start like the crowds are fresh and uh, a match like this so just served its purpose you could say uh, if this match is a classic i'd say yes you know it's probably one of the best tv matches in aw history probably ever and uh, this like this was possibly the best like you you i might be jumping a gun a little here so the finish you could say was like the perfect way you could have kept both of these stars strong because it was all about who was the better wrestler and the finish just served its purpose in that sense was it a classic i don't know but was it a great match 100% yes it was and uh, i don't know yeah the finish the finish it really made sense protecting both men here like we were kind of predicting who's going to go over should it be danielson should it be omega will omega take another uh, loss as champion but great finish great decision the match was great and the crowd went insane before the bell even rang that says a lot about yes. both of these guys Yes, it was like comparing it to Hogan versus Rock at uh, WrestleMania 18. The crowd was just electric from the start through. I mean, throughout the match, it was wow. But this had like you know proper technical wrestling, and it had its big moments, etc. What more could you ask for? 
So uh, Danielson made his first entrance. Then Omega came out. Danielson is super over with this crowd. And yeah, like we were talking about uh, the stare down, you know, before the bell even rang. Crowd is going insane. Once the bell rang, we, we get a standing ovation from the New York uh, faithfuls. And they took a while. Both men took a while to, you know, uh, just feel the energy, which I liked. And... Uh, yeah, and the crowd, we, uh, the crowd was so loud, we couldn't even figure out, you know, watching through our screens, what they were chanting, were they chanting, yes, this is awesome, holy shit, but then we got to know, they fight were forever. trying, yeah, fight forever, everything, but they were trying to chant, you're gonna get your fucking head kicked in, they were trying yes. that, but it came off, little off sync, I guess, they tried yeah, their it best, was a little, a little, and you could see like the war prints on both of these guys' chests and like throughout their upper bodies. This was a war and, you know, like I, my brother was watching this along with me and he enjoyed it. He's not like a very big wrestling fan, but he certainly enjoyed it. And is it just me or we didn't see 100% Brian Danielson, like the vicious Brian Danielson that he promised. But I think he held it a little back, I guess. Saving it for like an even bigger occasion, probably. Yeah. Then he's going to destroy his opponent. Yes. Like the Daniel Brand, the vicious Daniel Brand, Brian, Brian Danielson. Danielson. And I was going to say Daniel Bryanson. So that's it. Uh, the vicious Brian Danielson that you're saying, like you is pretty well known in ROH and we got we got to see a glimpse we got to see some glimpses of that like you know the fucking head kicked in chance and uh, like I've got till five and the like you know he was just uh, stomping stomping into Kenny so we got to see like some glimpses of that like this was more like we were seeing Daniel Bryan but like with a small tinge of Bryan Danielson so you know you could see like that could be an evolution in itself so as his, you know, the honeymoon period is over in AEW, like he's just still soaking into the adulation of the crowd. What do they love him for? So the more we are going to see more of that, like, you know, gradually, like when he even goes full backshit and saying and just beats people up for real. But uh, let's talk some highlights. So they did start with some great technical wrestling. And Danielson is coming off as the smartest guy in the room. So they're doing all the technical stuff. You know, Omega would get the upper hand uh, with the chops and stuff. Danielson would fire back with chops and kicks. And this was the, you know, theme of the entire match. They would chop each other. Danielson would the kick the shit out of Omega. So Omega, sorry, Danielson was trying to, you know, go for that joint manual. Uh, what do you call it? Bending the arm, bending the fingers. Yeah. Yes, so, joint manipulation. Uh, oh, Danielson was in full control after it to pay, and uh, from there it was uh, for a while. Danielson was in control. Then Omega would get some advantage, and oh, Danielson was targeting the arm, which was now would set up for the label lock in the end. So we would see some old school moves from Danielson, like the cat eye mutilation. Uh, Omega was able to escape that. So there was this spot where both men were outside uh, on the LED screen. So I think Danielson was doing the yes cakes. He's going for that big roundhouse cake. Uh, Omega misses that and he said devastating uh, dragon suplex on the ramp. So this was a, you could say, a crucial part of the match. Then Omega... Uh, went uh, on the top of the ramp and got a jump start and hit a big running V trigger. Nearly killed Danielson here. And speaking about killing, did you see that buckle bomb? I don't know if it was a botch or intentional, but boy, that was insane. Like, he didn't connect the uh, buckles, but Danielson almost, you know, fell on the ropes and almost died. So, a really scary spot. So we get to not we get into the deep waters of the match. They're exchanging moves, big moves after big moves. 
like uh, Omega is hitting vicious V triggers, and Danielson uh, at one point hit a brutal looking, you know, rolling elbow or something like that. And the match is going very well. Crowd is eating everything up. And we didn't even realize that we are in the final minutes of this match. So they are exchanging these big moves. And Danielson, he locks in the label lock. So I think Omega was just close to tap out. But we went to a time limit draw. And it I really found the way, the way this match ended. I think Justin Roberts forgot to know. I think he didn't uh, give us the last 10 second call or something. He just said that we have one minute remaining in this match. So yes, you Don't they usually do it like when uh, there are 10, rem- 10 minutes remaining into this match? So I think he probably must have missed that. And then when uh, Brian was going for the label lock and like, he was going in that Rings of Saturn slash lockjaw position for Omega to you know give him more, give Brian more leverage and certainly more damage to Omega as he was working on that arm. And I think I, yeah, that's when we that's when we know we got to know that there is uh, like there are only few minutes remaining. But I think it he usually does it periodically. Like there are ten minutes and then there are five minutes and then you know the last minute of this match. So that was the only time we got to know like you know this the time limit is about to expire. But regardless, like you know you were so invested into this match, I think it worked in that sense because had he kept reminding us then probably we would just be concerned about the time limit more than the match. So, fair play. That's it, I guess. So, we went to a time limit draw. Crowd is booing. Of course, they want they wanted a finish, but sadly, they won't be getting one here. So, uh, then we see the super click, that is Adam Cole and the Young Bucks come out to, you know, I think uh, at this point, Danielson had uh, still had the label lock on Omega. And they had to mm. break up the submission here. And they would and end then up... both were exchanging strikes and then they were like, the time limit has expired. And then these guys are just separated by referees. And then, you know, the super click comes out. They're just checking on... Uh, they're checking on Kenny and whether he was okay. And Brian was just getting in, getting to his feet. Like, he was looked, out, looked at by Aubrey and uh, there was, I think, another EMT guy. And while he was just there in the corner and the super click super kicks him and uh, the Jurassic Express and Christian, they come out in aid for Brian and they have like a uh, mini brawl and then the super click escape setting things in motion for the Rampage match, the six, the trios, uh, the trios match on Rampage. Okay, so now you have Omega versus Danielson out of the way. Omega is claiming now you are not getting any rematch. Nada, he said. So at least for now, because you know, Brian still has to enter the ranking system, get some wins, and then challenge Omega for the championship later on. So it's it's fine that way. You couldn't is... you couldn't have seen any of these guys taking a loss, and uh, so you know, this sets things sets in motion for Brian to enter the pool. So because mm-hmm. he'll be motivated to get a lick at Omega's title uh, title, and then, you know, climb his way up in the rankings and face Omega again. Because this was this match was about who was the better wrestler. And Brian was like, at least for now, I don't need the championship. I just want to know who's the better wrestler. So, there you go. But what's the guarantee? What's the guarantee that Omega stays champion by the point we get another rematch between these two guys? I mean... Probably, you know, if Omega wins it again later, but uh, all signs are pointing towards a possible, fingers crossed, a possible hangman return and him winning the championship from Omega because that story still needs its own conclusion slash uh, extension, you could say. We'll have to wait and see, but pretty great stuff here. I, I, I don't know about the, you know, is this match a classic or not? I think I need to give this a second watch. Probably, yeah. I'll get, like I enjoyed the hell out of it the first time. I'll just rewatch it because how great it was. Probably, it's it's a definite five star match from Melzer. That's for sure. Okay, congratulations for Brian Danielson for his first five star match ever. 
all it took for him was jump to E to Bleedo. But uh, pretty crazy, right? That he didn't get at least one five star match from Nelson. I mean, neither did the. I mean, neither did the Rock and Randy Orton. But uh, in Rock's case, he was more of a flasher, slash, slash entertainer. With Orton, you could say like he was and. Screw that! Neither does Kurt Angle has a have a five star match in his career. Kind of makes but sense. But it's okay. I don't know. Kind of makes sense. Pro- probably, like when he was, you know, wrestling as Perk Angle, and he was just going <laughs> hell for leather. And even then, even then, he didn't get a five star match, which is kind of strange. But again, like you know, it's just a it's just one man's opinion. So it, there's nothing to get mad about. But uh, moving on. Uh... So they followed up with CM Punk got a huge reaction. Uh, so As fans, always. fans over there wanted a stage dive, but Punk was being a little smart here, a little cautious. Did you notice yes, that? The, yes, he was. It was funny to see that because, uh, like, even the ramp was something like probably Punk could have done it, and then he was just seeing like you know oh, there is a division with. Uh, there's a division between the ramp. The ramp is too elevated, and there's a division between like the barricade and the ramp. So he's like, "Nah, it's too, it's too big for me. I can't make the jump." So good of Punk to you know let like keep us aware about the the difference. So fair play. So he's out here, you know, just plugging in his match uh, against Powerhouse Hobbs at uh, the Rampage Grand Slam. Nothing much, like I said, hyping up the match. And uh, he said that, you know, people want uh, the mad CM Punk, the old CM Punk. But he said he will, you know, uh, showing up, but careful what you wish for, he said. And he said that, and he talks about Team Taz and... Also mentioned a fact that half of the members are from New York, but still nobody likes them. I'll I got a laugh from that, and mm-hmm. uh, he was making sure that you know uh, hyping up the New York uh, crowd, saying that finally professional wrestling is back in New York. After a long time, he says. So that's I mean, true. Punk. You could say Punk was out of touch of wrestling. You could see because like two years ago. ROH and New Japan did a show at MSG. We must have forgotten about that. Mm, uh, I don't know. It's kind of still an underrated topic. Wait, what? In like, most people nowadays really don't see it as a big thing at that. Like it happened. Like some some a promotion like New Japan and ROH, you know, were able to fill up. Madison Square Garden. Yes, it it should be talked about a lot more often, but sadly it isn't. And sadly, even people remember that uh, ROH New Japan show for uh, fucking Enzo and Chaz showing up and shitting all over the show. Which kind of makes sense now what they were intending to do at that time. But uh, everything went south. Yes, probably. Anyways, but what were what were we originally talking about? CM Punk, right? CM Punk, CM yeah. Punk's promo. professional wrestling is back. So in New York City, nothing much here. Really good stuff from Punk. No bullshit here. Just get to the point. Loved it. Yes, I'd say that it the placement of this promo hurt a little bit because you know it, like and Punk himself admitted that like how do I follow that match. And then he just goes on with the spiel saying, uh, uh, like, they want hot team Taz, Hobbs, they wanted to kill me, they couldn't. It's your mistake. And uh, on the rampage, I'm going to kill Hobbs. Like, powerhouse Hobbs will go to sleep. Mic drop. So that's pretty much Punk's. That was the message of Punk. Like, you didn't kill me, but I will kill you for sure. And he looked like very grizzled, grizzled veteran, you know, with those white beard and stuff. And uh, there is unfortunately a spoiler for this. Like, it's not a big spoiler. It's not the result of this match. But uh, I'll let the fans keep their interest for the show itself. So I won't spoil what what was with this match. Like, I still don't know the result, but there was a spoiler for it. 
ओके बट एनीवेज ग्रेट स्टफ फ्रॉम पंक एंड लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू दिस मैच एंड आई हैव आई वांटेड टू मेंशन समथिंग नाउ दैट यू हैव सेड या नाउ दैट यू हैव सेड अबाउट द प्लेसमेंट ऑफ दिस प्रोमो आफ्टर दिस ग्रेट ग्रेट मैच आई थिंक द क्राउड काइंड ऑफ डाइड आफ्टर दैट लाइक दे हैड हिम नो ऑफ दिस स्टफ probably like yeah that's what i was alluding to where uh, you know placement because the crowd was exhausted after the first match they didn't really know how to react and it took them like a considerably long time to you know get back to the senses and start giving life to the show because punk the punk's promo and even the match after that suffered after after the first match so there's like the crowd was pretty exhausted and then later on they came uh i think you are right about the suffering part i think you are alluding to the mjf versus brian pillman junior match yes even mjf wasn't getting enough heat if there's any heat it was online because uh, see that's I, what he's good at yeah i think i think he did a great job like i had re- uh, replayed this multiple times just to hear the reaction that mjf got really great reaction like i like i was uh, i was talking about the match the entrance i mean that's always mjf getting booed out of the building and he revels in that which is good to see and uh, this is like an underrated part of his entrance like uh, when he's entering through the ramp it's like from plain view long island you know the wait and all and then uh justin robert just says it with all excitement that it's mjf and then when mjf goes into the ring and he asks him to introduce again and then just robert just goes ladies and gentlemen mjf is this in his dead voice and then mjf just revels into that which is great stuff don't forget about shivani super hatred for this guy <laughs> yeah i like I wrote this in my notes. It's like Shivani hates MJF. MJF's guts. LOL. Like he's like, ha, ah, this fucking rat, this asshole. Like I hate to admit that he's talented, but he's a scum of the earth rat sauce, dick head. So Shivani's hatred for Shivani's hatred for MJF is similar to how Bobby Heenan used to hate Hulk Hogan, regardless of which allegiance he was on, whether he was a heel or a face. Bobby Heenan hated his guts. so this is like similar but uh, i i thought they really worked a good match problem is yeah. i think you are alluding to this one brian pill the crowd got behind brian pillman junior but uh, the match was over by then <laughs> right? yes and yeah it was it was like he was doing his best to get the crowd back up and fair play to pillman junior you know he looked great in the presence of mjf being the shit head that he is and he was getting his good amount of offense mjf was healing on him there was this one great spot where uh, you know like when someone's going for the back body drop and then the person running refuses into a knee strike and then pillman mjf tried to do the same to pillman junior where uh, pillman junior was going for the back body drop but mjf go- was going for the knee and then while mjf was going for the knee then pillman junior just ducks and mjf falls down that was that was great and then the crowd the crowd did cheer loudly for that and then pillman junior was just like this and uh, yeah great stuff and this feud has really gotten him over with the crowd which is again great also cm punk because pillman junior was one of the opponents he wanted to work with in promos that he had mentioned all in all fuck yeah <laughs> they are doing as of now doing well with brian pillman junior it still needs some work i guess yeah and he, it it is a work in progress it will get better over time perhaps even better than that later on and yeah i mean they are clearly investing their stocks into building a new star like pillman junior and that's more you, you need you know you need new stars in wrestling and they are doing this that but uh, if you want to talk some highlights here the story of the match was mj was targeting the arm of a pillman here so he can go for the sort of the earth submission later on so going they are working a very old school style i'm very i shouldn't say vocal 
but it's facts. He does work a old school style. I'm talking about Brian Pinman Jr., which is good because he kind of makes him stand out from the bunch. Hmm. Like even the mullet is very old. See, so uh, we got to a point where MJF is outside. Pillman was going for a dive, but uh, MJF uh, grabs the cheerleader. What's her name? Julia Hart. Julia Hart. So he grabs her as a shield. Pillman stops. So I think uh, Julia Hart had, uh, you know, a, she kind of got pissed that you know she was being toyed around. So she kind of you know slapped MJF here. So there was some kind of interaction here and there between Julia and MJF. So Pillman, you know, would uh, beat up MJF for a while. And then he was going to f- for the finish. That is his flying uh, forearm thing. And at air this Pillman. point, yeah, air Pillman thing. So at this point, the crowd really got into Brian Pillman Jr. But uh, like I said, the match was over by then because Midair, uh, MJF caught Pillman and locked in the sort of the earth and Pillman instantly tapped out. So there you go. I think that was the great decision if you want to you know MJF to still be a top guy so he can you know, have some momentum for that guy. Pillman, he but could, also, you could yeah, bring back Pillman Pil- in this you know, top position if you want. Yes, I was just uh, sorry to interrupt you, but that's what I was going for too. Like, Pillman Jr. looks like a star in defeat. Like, this, you know, the valiant babyface who was fighting the odds against the scum of the earth. And yeah, I mean, they, they could, you know, build more to that. And this is surely not the first time they are going to wrestle for the long, for a long time in AEW. There, there, are, there are going to be some battles here and there in, like, you know, within the story they'll probably visit in some uh, some tournament or a pay-per-view match down the line somewhere you know after seven to eight months you could see the progress in Pillman Jr. how far he's come from this match till that point and then you would have another match and then more and more later on which is great stuff let's see where MJF goes from here I think we would we could be addressing that in a certain match We'll be getting to that, but uh, moving on, we had a interview segment with Chris Jericho and Jake Hager. They were plugging in their match for Rampage, uh, where they will be facing the men of the year. Nothing much, nothing less. Uh, anything you want to add before we move on to the next match? It was like a classic 80s babyface promo from Jericho and a very new school promo from Jake Hager. He was like... Uh, Men of the Year, more like Boys of the Week. And then he, they were singing the song from last week, like Fat Face, Dipshit, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, then Jeric- and then Jericho is like, uh, you messed with the wrong boys. I Like Dan Lambert has no business in, you know, sticking his nose into with you, yada, yada. And then he's like, he's hyping up the crowd, like at Rampage in New York, in Grand Slam, we are going to beat you up. That's it. Simple, <laughs> Simple but effective. But uh, moving on, we had Cody Rhodes versus Malachi Black. Uh, you were saying something? No, 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 no. Continue. Uh, so this is the rematch from the one they had at Daily's Place where it was a quick squash match where Malachi no won in dominant fashion. So this one had to go long. So Malachi Black like always, great entrance. Always gets a great reaction. He's a star. He's a star. So, Cody Rhodes, he comes out and uh, I think it was no surprise what kind of reaction he was getting here in New York. <laughs> Dude, he even has his own tunnel. He neither comes from the heel, neither comes from the faces. He just comes from the middle. It's like the hot th- stuff and then he's just coming up from the stage and then the adrenaline in my soul, dash, dash, Cody Rhodes. And then Arn comes out and even Brandy comes out, which is which was like a huge return for AEW. Rhodes to Great the top, stuff. man. Rhodes to the top. Yeah, gotta, gotta plug the show, brother. Uh, but uh, this was a reaction. 
uh, you could call it the go away heat or the Roman Reigns slash John Cena yeah. heat. Or the X Pac heat, the original. Fuck X Pac. Anyways, uh, <laughs> like uh, okay. like I said, the New York crowd hates Cody Rhodes, and uh, I hope they do the right thing after this all is done. I think they already planted the seeds. With Brandy coming back, they set an angle in this match. Cody even uh, the, Brandy even uh, Brandy entered from the heel tunnel, if you noticed. So I think AW is doing the right thing. So about the match, the match was not that all good, but it had some elements and it had spots. So what do you think about it? I felt this match was fine for what it was. Like it wasn't. It wasn't bad. I, it was pretty. Decent, because we were, but you know, we were all fearing for something. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, which is great. And uh, like the sequence, there were a few noticeable botches. Cody looked gassed for the most part, like in the early portion, which was worrisome. And uh, there was like a one scary moment outside the ring with Arn. Besides that, I think, and Malakai was on offense. For the most part, I think which was which was good, but besides that, I think it was it was a fine match. Like no major complaints besides the glaring botches. So um, Malakai, he was going for those quick submission which looked great. He locked in a octopus from nowhere, and I'm like, this guy's great. So that was kind of the story here. Uh, Malakai goes for this quick submission. And uh, he was trying to end this match with the black mask, but Cody had it scouted. And yeah, he uh, was going with the elevation, and then but Co- Cody had it scouted. Yeah. So there was this spot where Cody uh, went to the outside. Brandy decided to show up. Meanwhile, oh, Malachi did that uh, fake out moonsault and a backflip into the sit down. A crowd goes insane for that. And uh, like always, Brandy had to be the center of attraction here. He shows up and face to face with Malachi, did a sit down and flips the bird. That, there you go. So this was a way to kind of you know distract Malachi. So Cody Rhodes, uh, he was on the offense here. So let's get to the main stuff here. So what happened was there was something going on with Arn Anderson. Uh, where I think Malachi had, I think he was going for a pin or something, right? Yes, he was. was. Like this was after Malachi hit the black mass or something. Yeah, he was. He was going for the pin. And then Cody reverses the pin as well. And yeah. So this spot with Arn Anderson, he's, I think in a way was trying to, he got on the apron was walking around the apron and I think it was very natural how we fell off the apron and like it could have happened to anyone. Like he trips and falls, falls off the apron, kind of a distraction here and uh, Cody Rhodes from here, his full attention went towards Arn Anderson, like what's happening to him and he decided to, you know, screw this match at one point and even Arn Anderson got pissed at Cody Rhodes, like Stay focused in this match. Forget about me. So this was Coach the, Arn. yeah. So this was the downhill factor for uh, Cody Rhodes. So at this point, Malachi was thrown out of the ring, and I think I had a suspicious thing that what he was going to do, and he did it. So referee was distracted at one point, and Malachi he sprayed the black mist, got a roll up pin. And that's how Malachi won this match. Great decision. And Hindi, Easily. I like to say, I have to say something in Hindi. Konse mandir me nariyal porna hai bolo. Like this decision was great. If this was it WWE, bro, up. listen. If this was WWE, Malachi would have taken the loss. That's what we all were fearing, because. Cody's booking has been very WWE like, unfortunately, ever since he's come to AEW. But to his credit, he's lost like some very important matches. He's put uh, he's put over a lot of stars, so you can't really complain about that. 
but yeah like we all were fearing that cody will get his win back like who who i'm triple h of aw and just go on strong like nothing happened like <laughs> thankfully thankfully malakai got you know his win even though it was like a little cheap i thought that but it kind of made sense because he's already destroyed him in the past and the story was again more about cody like it always is like how is he going to bounce back from it later on what they pl- they planted the seeds a little for a heel turn like he even bashed the referee while he was uh, kicking the shit out of malakai at the corner and uh, and even like the arn spot looked it looked very uh, it looked for shoot and i was scared for arn i hope he's okay if it was if he fell for real but uh, anyways great decision and that's how you put over talent pecky lynch huh huh uh, yeah anyways. but uh, Yeah, speaking great. of WWE, speaking yeah, of WWE, sorry. Uh, regarding the first match, like people were complaining uh, regarding the time limit draw that uh, if this was WWE, people would have shat all over it. I don't get how? it. <laughs> It's like because it was a non-finish, right? At the end of the day. and people would have been like yeah uh, this was like wwe did do one of these things last year and people shat on it anyway so i think it's it's fair of them for bound to bounce back and complain with something of their own but then this the booking makes a lot more sense than it did what they were trying to do in wwe so i'd say good stuff from aw again But speaking about like, Cody Rhodes, like I said yeah. in the beginning, they have planted a lot of seeds. Brandy Rhodes coming out, and this the reaction he gets from the crowd these days. And now they set up something with Arn. Like, don't get surprised by next week Cody just beats the shit out of Arn Anderson, and that's the official heel turn or something. I'm interested. Okay, yeah, like I'm I'm ready for a Cody Rhodes heel turn. Everybody is. is going to do very well i guess it's high time it's high time he does it because the crowd clearly hates him at this point and he really Since... does it and he really does a great job as a heel as well and he's a better heel as a, than as a face or if you could say if i'd be saying this like around 7 to 8 years ago i would be laughing at myself because as he was a pretty decent heel in wwe like as uh, you know dashing and dashing I still preferred him as a face like after you remember when he actually turned face from Damien Sandow stuff and then the him getting his job back versus the shield that classic tag match that they had that is pretty underrated yes and that for to me that is the best version of Cody Rhodes like this white meat baby face who was actually over with the crowd then you know once he jumped ship to ring of honor new japan the whole bullet club stuff that's when people started on cody like a lot uh but and then it, aw happened like it was genuine man the initial aw run as a baby face this guy was lovable man hmm he was like the perfect white meat baby face but what exactly went wrong with him i think the booking what kind of it that's even that is a little confusing i don't know but he has hmm. done his job of putting over the talent i would say that oh 100% like a lot of new stars were created in cody's presence and uh, some people did look great when when they were like shawn spears for example when he had that feud with cody like people really dismissed like you know cody giving his friend a paycheck but I I like I watched this match very recently like on the AW has uploaded the first ever all out on the YouTube. So I just checked it I, once again I was trying to watch it with fresh eyes and man Spears did look a hundred I mean look a million bucks in that match like he was strong he was booked pretty strong like the match was typical overbooked shit like what Cody is maligned for like in AW that is but it was it was great and you know looking back at it you kind of see the seeds being planted for pinnacle like almost two years later because there was mjf there was shawn spears and there was tully like they were just seeing eye to eye mjf and tully they were like they weren't 
they didn't even hit each other they were just like you know looking face to face and mjf was trying to do his job trying to you know be cody's sidekick but spears looked great and then later on you know he put guys like uh, mjf himself over he put darby over malakai and uh, who else am i forgetting the penta stuff was a little head scratching before after revolution and brody the the match with brody like wow like that was the best you know Bro- brody lee we had ever looked in his career all thanks to cody Rhodes because you know just beat the shit out of him and even dark order was like mega over at that point and after that yeah he has done his job he's done his job very well Some, now something went yeah. wrong he's, he did a great job but something went wrong in terms of his character i guess kind of got stale i guess and mm. this is a smart fan base ridwan like mm-hmm. the aw fan base they see through every eyes the little little point they mentioned that also and they thought that this cody character is getting stale as a baby face so and to be fair he did tease his heel turn like a lot of times like even when he won the tnt championship from like from Lance Archer the first ever like the uh, previous years double or nothing and then he was just teasing the four horsemen stuff uh, like throughout the open challenges that he did and that didn't come to fruition so probably that's the grievance that they have or i don't know that's probably like we could do a whole debate episode on this like what went wrong with Cody Rhodes but at least at least he didn't uh, pull this at rollins how so like targeting will lost pre and uh, shelling uh-huh. he, he, he is shelling but that's expected because he is the vice president of the promotion so fair enough oh yeah i remembered uh, i think people really got sour on cody roads after the ogogo feud he did but that's still too late like people were already getting sick of cody roads even you remember the revolution ladder match like cody roads was taken out with the shoulder injury and he was just backstage you could clearly see through the hard cam that cody is just there in the face tunnel just resting like he's just waiting for a spot to get back and crowd was booing the hell out of him and uh, even during uh, there was one point where you remember when darby won the championship and he won the tnt championship cody was the one who took the center stage and he's just trying to cut a promo and give him the title so probably like that's their grievance probably it's fair to criticize but again like it's your opinion we're not going to change that but great job here that they put over the other uh, top star that's malakai black and cody rhodes can do it stuff but uh, moving on we had a promo from miro and sami guara if i'm not wrong i think this yes. is to hype up the upcoming match that will be happening next week that is uh, guara versus miro for the tnt championship which should be good so uh, they mentioned in this promo the injured neck that you have been mentioning a lot and they finally decided to bring this up on tv which is great stuff the little little stuff which is great so guvara claims that when he gets the tnt championship he may uh, buy fuego del sol and brand new car which he lost at uh, the last match we had on rampage between miro and fuego so yeah should be good but uh, there is a chance we could be seeing a new tnt champion like this is one match where you are not exactly sure where will the tide go you could obviously predict miro on a safer note but guevara has been pretty heavily featured on aw since the start and he's like one of their biggest rising stars so this could really go either way you could like you can't predict who is eventually going to win this match which you know which makes wrestling great in the first place like it's all about who who is going to win and keeps you hooked into this match which is great so i am interested to see where this goes 
I would still love to see Miro retain the championship because I'm enjoying his run and it's impending that CJ shows up sometime soon. Uh, but I wouldn't be opposed to Sami winning it because he's like a star on the up and AEW is clearly have a vested interest in making him a superstar. So, if Sami wins, great. If Miro retains, uh, great. great as well. But uh, if Sammy doesn't win, then I have the perfect baby face who can dethrone Miro for the championship, which I will name next week. I think this is not the right time to do that. Mm, okay, I'll be I'll be waiting because when you said baby face, I had someone in mind, and I'm not sure if it's the same person. Let's see if uh, our if we have the same person in mind. But uh, we'll save that for next week. But let's talk about this tag match. This is between FTR versus Darby Allen and Sting. This was great. Like, uh, if anything came close to Omega versus Bran Danielson on this card, this was the match, bro. This was great. FTR are just tag team. They are key. They are just great as a tag team. They're just machines. Brilliant stuff. And did I mention that Sting is just 62 years old? Yes. Uh, you haven't mentioned, but uh, like you were probably going to do that. This match was awesome. Like, you know, FTR are like the greatest tag team today, I'd say. You know, with after, probably after Young Bucks or like, if you were to rank a top five tag team, they'll probably be two or three Hands based down. on achievements. Yeah, based on achievements uh, slash, you know, their matches, yada, yada. But, man, you this couldn't have been any better. This was perfect the way it was. It was to, you know, keep the crowd fresh for the main event, one. Second, like... So Sting can still go and Sting hasn't like, you know, despite his injuries, that's when he's looked like a little shabby, which is not to, you know, I'm not discrediting Sting or anything, but at 62, he still, he still looks like he can go, which is lovely to see. And you have Darby backing him up, you know, he's he's an enigma of his own and FTR were like the perfect team to, you know, bring the best out of both of these both of these guys as a team altogether. And like, even when Sting was, you know, he was still actively wrestling back as to Mania 31 versus Triple H. The guy was doing like flip front flips, <laughs> which was great. And he looked like he was wrestling actively amazing then. Now, after the injury, it's a little like, you know, Topsy turvy, but still he looks great. You know, that speaks volumes about how great of a wrestler Sting is. Like he's an all-time great, hands down. But this match, like <laughs> this match was amazing. This is just keeping the crowd fresh. And the crowd was like the crowd also made this match a lot better than it was. And that's why FTR are so great. Like if you put young bucks in that position, young bucks are great. But they are not. They, I think they don't have the capabilities of bringing the best out of someone else. For example, a Sting. FTR in the hand, they would make. They made Sting here look like million bucks. Yes, easily. So, um, if you want to talk some highlights, obviously both Sting and Darby are mega over with this New York crowd. Uh, so they did have Sting, you know, get involved from the get-go. Like he was trying to take down both FTR members, but there was some, you know, uh, thing where uh, Sting missed Sting a splash, you know, uh, and from there they were trying to ground Sting for a while, but we got attack from Darby. He, he was on offense for a while and he was going for this big coffin drop from uh, on the outside on the FTR members. But he got caught and Darby Allen was sent cut first into the apron. And from there, FTR dominated Darby Allen uh, uh, through until the ending parts of the match. 
but uh, they were trying to you know tease this big tag this hot tag for sting but ftr did a great job of stopping that uh, we also had the ring and half like a class it's it's become a classic ftr spot you know like they always take the opponent to their corner and just beat the shit out of him so it's like the classic ta- old school tag team psychology psychology or whatever you want to call it you can also call uh this uh, ftr sport that they do like they have their opponent in the abdominal stretch and they try to use that leverage with the other ftr member have you seen that sport they do yeah so that is a uh, great to see every time so like i said they are teasing this hot tag with sting which uh, darby allen finally makes it sting goes wild he's spinning out this big big moves and we get a you deserve it chant for sting yeah, so let's get to the final part so what happened was uh, sting hit uh, i think it was cash wheeler for, with the scorpion death drop so there was some shenanigans with tully blanchard i guess uh, tully blanchard was you know uh, eventually taken out by sting so as we get to the final parts sting had dax harwood in this uh, scorpion death lock Darby, on the other hand, was uh, in. I think was caught off on these. I think was tied on, on the, the second rope. Oh, yeah, you get my point. So uh, he has uh, Harwood in his submission. Cash Wheeler, he reached out to Harwood, you know, just to make the save. So Darby, Allen, you could see in the uh, parts of the camera, he was getting off top. I think he was going for a coffin, coffin drop, obviously. And I'm like, yes, he's going to hit the coffin drop on Tax Harwood. It's going. It's going to look great, but this guy decided to hit the coffin drop not on Dax Harwood, but on Cash Wheeler, who was outside assisting Harwood. He hits on the apron, which oh, and that too on the apron, which looked insane. So Dax Harwood had no choice just to tap out. Great finish, great match, loved it. Easily, like awesome stuff, and uh, you know that the apron is the hardest part of the ring, right? That's facts, bro. Hell yeah! <laughs> and there was this yet another spot. I, there was a great comedy spot Chai. where the that Sting is going insane here with the this match, right? Pulling off these huge moves. Oh, okay. So I think there was this spot where Sting is hitting the ropes continuously, and we that ends in both men colliding in a shoulder tackle. Uh, I think it was Dax Harwood. He goes down. So Sting is yeah. gassed at this point. So he bounces off the ropes. And then he lands on Dax's Harwoods. That was a great comedy <laughs> spot. That's classic wrestling, you know. Yeah, and then uh, these guys were uh, Jr. and uh, Excalibur were arguing. You know, Jr. and Shivani were arguing like probably he should have DQ'd Sting and uh, like lucky of Ramsberg to not do that. And then he's like, if there's anyone who pushes the referee's buttons, it's Sting. So that that was a good comedy spot, and there's there was also the chair spot and towards the end, you know, when Sting t- before Sting takes Tully Blanchard out of the equation. So Tully plants a chair, and uh, like Sting was going ape shit. He was uh, hitting them with the stinger splashes, both uh, Cash and Dax. And then uh, Tully plants a chair. He gives it to Dax, and he plants a chair on the uh, middle middle turnbuckle. And uh, Sting, while Sting was like he was, they were trying to bait Sting into giving another uh, Stinger splash. But uh, while Sting was going for it, uh, Dax moves, and then Sting notices the chair. And while then Dax was trying to spear Sting into the chair, Sting ducks and Dax goes into that chair. So that was also like a good spot. Shows how smart Sting is, like as a veteran, and how calculative FTR can be to you know bait someone into a fence and uh, taking advantage of that. Like both w- both tag teams looked amazing. This. Yeah, I could have really taken FTR to take the big win here. Like they are the top. I tag- was I was hoping for it actually. Yeah, because they, they are a top tag team. You could have given them the win, but uh, if you look on the other side, we have a big star in Darby Allen. And I think they didn't want to uh, have Sting take a L here. I think they are saving something here. When Sting finally takes a loss, it could be a huge thing for someone. Someone getting over huge. So. 
and i think this guy is already huge and i think it's mjf yep we were alluding to that last week you were you were the one who brought it up and i did some thinking here with the situation that kind of makes sense now that they have beaten ftr here so this could uh, you could bridge this into a mjf and darby allen feud somehow yes and the story itself the story writes itself you know like mjf smug guy not taking any risks knows he's better than you and you know it darby kills himself every week so mjf would do like the drew gulak 2017 like you know the make wrestling a safe space gimmick probably he would go for that and then he's like he's going to become a star while darby you know the man who kills himself won't have enough in his career to like you know pro- proceed So there is like a huge potential in this, and I'm all in for it. These guys are like the future of the business for AEW in general. They have been built, built up massively in these like ever since AEW even started. So it only makes sense that these guys would eventually feud, and now is the greatest greatest time as any to do so. Uh, let's wait and see, man. Should it could uh, this match is so. could be so great uh, they can easily put it on a paper i feel that's the plan for full year for between both of these guys that's like match. the upcoming that's the upcoming pay per view for them Should yeah will be great but we'll uh, be great. um shall we move on to the main event yes we shall uh, did we have anything else regarding segment wise uh we did not they just ran they just ran through the card for uh, rampage and uh, next week's dynamite which is the only match so yeah so uh let's get to the main event and that it was for the aw women's championship we had dr but baker dmd she was facing ruby soho who had won the casino battle royal at uh, all out and that's why she's getting the title shot here kind of surprised that they decided to go with this match as the main event uh, but uh, i think tony khan really wanted to put a lot more focus on this match as the main event in this big show so fair enough uh, seeing the last match the tag match with ftr uh, darby and sting that could have been a great main event to to send the crowd home happy yes probably but i think this was also good in a way to showcase the women that they have like aw gets a lot of shit from the fans for like you know not having a good women's division and to to give credit to them they've been trying hard at like you know making them look like look some look like something and uh, this is probably a good it was a good opportune moment in front of like a packed house 20000 people and probably one of the biggest shows ever biggest weekly shows that is and having the women main event i think it was a good call uh, about the match the the match was decent enough but is it just me or was it too predictable that should we just even care about this match did you also feel that way i mean i watched this on delay like i knew what the result was like i watched it after work you know and even then like you know watching this match i felt it was i felt it was pretty good like you could see there were few instances where it could have gone either way but like they're clearly you know saving brit for like bigger fishes later on that's where they're going for so in that case you're right that you know it was hard to care about it but it was still interesting and that was largely interesting to showcase ruby soho on a more grander stage like to show what she could do what she could do best rather and um, brit is also coming into her own like this was probably brits no i'd still i'd still take uh, statlander the match at statlander over this one like this was i you would call it the second best match in her uh, title reign but it's it's been it's 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 getting better her title reign is getting better which is great so like i said decent enough match they were pulling off some big moves 
so there was this uh, big move from the top row where brit baker she a red crash on soho and i think so she lands on her neck yeah that was insane yes and uh, even when uh, like brit stormed uh, soho on the steps that also looked a little it looked a little scary i hope she was okay after that yeah and by the way the crowd is really into both these ladies like so yes. is over the uh, brit baker is over with the old dmd chants everything is going well had a decent enough match so let's get to the finish here so what happened was there were uh, like constant interferences from both jamie hater and reba so like uh, as we get to the final parts like i think uh, soho got the right kick on uh, brit baker right and was mm. about to go for the pin but here comes reba she also it uh, it you know right kick and a uh, lot of distractions going on so jamie hater she got in and she was able to get a shot on soho so this was kind of the downhill for uh, ruby soho as brit baker she catches uh, soho in the lock jaw so has no choice had to tap out and that was it brit baker is still AEW women's champion very predictable outcome but uh, let's see hope so does better now that she has had she will be she will be good she will be fine yeah she will be she will be she will be good after this and i am intrigued who does she feud with next i hope probably someone like uh, rosa or uh, even even nyla rose would be fine <laughs> this they set up something with jamie hater right here in this match yeah but we we've seen the match and they wouldn't repeat it like so fast probably later but not now. and i have a news to break like not break but uh, like this this match this match was good i felt uh, you know in a lot of parts like it was more a showcase for ruby than it was for brit baker we know how great brit baker is and as a champion you know it further solidifies her reign which is great like it was predictable but you could probably you could take this into account that you know her like she's just putting on good matches from here and there are like more bigger opponents for her in store probably rosa or you know whoever there is but get to the big news yes so <clears throat> as per uh, andrew zarian shout out to andrew zarian from the matman podcast so he broke a news that there will be a secondary women's championship on uh, a- there will be a new championship i just broke it so a women's uh, secondary women's championship which will be called the tbs championship so it is the equivalent to the tnt championship for uh, male competitors so this will be for female and i feel like this was it's not something uh, common but i feel it will be good because women have something else to fight for if not for the women's championship altogether and given how you know the deep how deep the women's roster has gotten in aw it only makes sense that uh, this championship would have come probably sooner or later yeah it it's good like the the point you mentioned it's good in that way the, now that we have another championship here for this aw women's division but uh, like we still have this problems that we often mention about this division right and uh, mm. i think don't have problem with the championship but uh, i think we still need more depth here like we need to get over more of these uh, ladies here or else bring in some uh, from the free agent market if available or even the forbidden door can work see and they could do that with this uh, rumored championship it's not a rumor at this point it's official now. yeah i mean from new sources until aw confirms so yeah i think we need more depth in this division that's my only concern i mean they will eventually you know there will be more additions later on 
and uh, there's always the forbidden door to you know test the waters with this championship and it's fine if the championship is called the tbs championship not the tbs women's championship like fair enough in that sense but i'm intrigued how do they approach it and uh, Speaking of TBS, there's another news that uh, Dynamite will be moving to TBS from the first episode starting 5th January on uh, on TBS, the Dynamite, and uh, Rampage will stick on TNT every Fridays at the same time. Oh, but only Dynamite is moving to TBS, not Rampage. Yeah, Ramp- Rampage was going to remain on TNT when they even announced it in the first place. Oh, hmm. interesting. So yeah. Yes, but it's it's a little weird. Like uh, the TNT Championship will be defended exclusively on Rampage, or that remains to be seen. I think it will be. It's all in the Turner Group, right? So it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't concern us. Like we'll be watching through illegal streams. Thank you, Fight or Eurosports. Eurosports. But. Anyways, man, this was a Dynamite Grand Slam. Really great show. And I tried my best to avoid spoilers. And I hope Rampage turns out to be great. Yeah, I'm hoping for it. Like, people have discussed that how the show was. But I've tried myself. I've tried to, you know, avoid it. I still have, like, I don't know what the results are. So... Hoping for a great show when I see it. By the way, I've seen a lot of this thing on social media regarding. You have often heard the term that wrestling fans are the most unhygienic fan base that you could ever find, and I think it was proven a lot in this show in Arthur Ashe. You, you see through your Twitter timeline, everyone is talking about how these New York fans smell like shit. Well, I'm not the one to judge them, but uh, like, I I would keep my judgment to myself on this. But anyways, man, another point I forgot to mention is that MJF's parents were uh, present uh, in this show. Yes, and uh, MJ like they brought a sign like we know our son sucks, and then MJF just goes fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way. They are going to do a show in Long Island. I think it's for November, right? Yeah. Or December. Early December, I guess. November or December. Yes. And I'm curious to see what kind of reaction MJF gets there. Do they cheer? Mm. Yeah, they'll boo him. They'll boo him. They love to boo him. And if he does get cheer and he is able to make that a crowd turn on him, then he's the greatest heel of all time. Easily. He's getting there. Like, fans still hate him. Like, love to hate him. And he's doing that. And it's hard to it's hard to um, see him break character. And there are, like, very rare instances where he has, like, you know, a few interviews here and there. But it's when, it's, when he, when you see him outside of his character, it's a sight to behold. Because he's, he's actually a pretty nice guy. <laughs> From what I could see in those uh, out of character interviews, it's sweet of the earth. Sweet of the earth. But, Sugar uh, of the earth. Yeah, but we we have a big show next week, man. Rochester. Yes, a possible debut, perhaps. And who could this be, man? I hope it isn't. I hope it leads to Hangman returning, but don't know what's going to happen. Whose contract has, whose ninety days has expired? Bollywood boys. Nope. Anyone else? I know. I will. Wyndham Rotunda, of course. I hope it's Wyndham and not Adam. Sure. Yep. Nah, it's it's not going to be Adam Sure for sure. If it if it is Adam, I hope it is Adam Page, not. Uh... If Adam Sure shows up, then I may get a tram. Uh, sorry, train sound effect for next week's review. Oh yes, we should. Like we but, should, we should specifically address it when it happens. But anyways, this was the Dynamite Grand Slam review. And before we leave, I think that's fine. Sure.
So you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at red underscore aman. And if you're watching this in video form, you could see it probably in any of these corners. And you can find Slam of Wrestling on Twitter at Slam of W, Instagram at Slam of Wrestling. You can find this review on Anchor and Spotify as well. And we will see you guys next time. Adios.